Hello, criminal justice enthusiasts, and welcome back to Judge Sim. Now, you're probably expecting to see you are the judge, but an update just came out for this game, and I figured I wanted to cover this before we return to you are the judge. I am going to be doing this as a weekly uh, video now, so it'll be on every Saturday for the time being. Once we get done with the Judge Sim ones, then we'll switch back over to You Are the Judge. But people really seem to love this game, and with this new update, we have the I Am the Law section here. And as far as I understand, this is going to provide us with 30 new cases to go through. So I don't know if it's still going to be set up in a weekly fashion like it was before, where we do three cases in a week. We'll see, but we'll probably end up doing roughly three cases per video, so about ten videos to cover this new update. But as I said, I know you guys were really enjoying this game. I enjoyed it too, and since this is new material out there, I wanted to cover it first before we jump back into You Are the Judge. So, with that in mind, let's see. I'm no longer You Are the Judge. I am the law. Welcome to I Am The Law Mode. There are 30 new cases in this mode. Decisions made in these lawsuits have no consequences, allowing you to decide as you wish. You are the law. The cases are designed for role-playing, featuring moral dilemmas and true case references. You will earn $500 after each case. With this money, you can play Blackjack and Wheel of Fortune. We recommend this game mode for players who have finished the story section. Have fun. All right, so we have finished the story section, so Really, this should be a bit more relaxed, it seems like. We're just doing some cases. Oh, our family's not here. Now, the one ending I had, we ended up as a janitor. I was told there was another ending we did not get, where if you decide every case correctly, you have a good ending. And I apologize I didn't get that one, but I did show several of the endings through the game. Let's see what this letter is all about here. Don't come home for a while. I don't want to see your face. You've neglected us a lot lately. Your children are growing up without a father because of you. You have always prioritized your work over your family. Maybe you'll have a chance to think during this time. Wow. Oh, I guess she even took the cat with her. That's unfortunate. I mean, I can go to the casino or I can end the day. Doesn't look like I have a case for this day, so, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and end the day. Alright, so, I actually did have another case as my first case, but somehow my recording messed up, so I went ahead and just clicked back in here, started with a new day again. The first part was the same, but actually this is a different first case, so that's sort of interesting. One thing I noticed here in that first case that didn't exist now is that I don't have a law book here. So what I ended up doing for that case, and I will end up doing for these cases going forward, I think, is I'll just simply look up on Google what is the appropriate sentence for these kind of things, and we'll just go with that. So let's go ahead and see here what the case is. All right, so we've got charges of insult and beating, case Woe asked for the fries to be remade at Burger Queen's in the mall he went to because it was too cold. According to the allegations, Case Woe, who complained about the fries that came later and argued with the cashier, was handed over to the police by mall security for verbally and physically assaulting the cashier and duty manager. All right, he's got no criminal record. His mental health is fine. His national status is fine. So I think that he's good on those things. I don't. I forget if the mental health negative meant that it's bad or not. I'm going to go with positive, meaning he's fine. I do really get to make the decisions in these cases, as I sort of saw with that first one. As I said, unfortunately, the recording messed up. So we're just going to start from scratch. I believe you'll see that case later on, and I'll go through it just as I did the first time for you guys. Lea Fraud. He didn't say anything about potatoes when he took his order. I also entered the order into the system. The preparation of the product is not the task of the team behind me. When the order was ready, 
He asked for the potatoes to be replaced, and I told this to my colleague in the back. After a while, I gave him the new potato. He thanked me and went to his table. Within one to two minutes, he came back again and started complaining about the potato and asked me to change it again. So I called my manager, and they started talking. After a while, a fight began between them. I heard my salesperson and a customer arguing, so I walked out of my room and headed to the cash register. After I understood what was the situation was, what the situation was, I came to him and started talking. I told him to calm down, and when I explained that we had already changed the potatoes and that it was not possible to change again, he got angry and hit me a few times. I don't remember the rest. I fainted, and when I woke up, the police came and took him away. Case Woe I was very busy that day. I didn't have a chance to eat, and I was really stressed because I was really hungry. I placed my order, and when my food arrived, my fries were freezing cold. I requested a replacement. A few minutes later, they gave me hot fries. However, the moment I put the fry in my mouth, I spat it out because it was an excessive amount of salt on it. When I asked them to change it again, they said they couldn't do that. At that moment, a small argument began between us. Then a store manager came over, and I didn't like the attitude they had. When they started insulting me, I lost my composure and insulted them back. This brand was one I liked, but now they've fallen out of my favor. I, I'm not going to worry so much about the uh, verbal insults. You know, fights happen, people say things, and since I am playing from the United States, freedom of speech is a thing. As long as he didn't say a derogatory term to him, I'm not even going to take that into consideration. Uh, we've got one piece of digital evidence for the case, so let's look at that. Tyler Pro, we can't keep replacing potatoes for you over and over again. Judging by your weight, it looks like you've already eaten enough, so don't drag it out any longer. This is my right as a customer. These potatoes are inedible. I will complain about your branch. Don't just complain. Go home crying. Fill out an online customer form and send it to me. I'll buy that I fired in a jar and send it home with some with the form. So. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, the manager should probably be fired for his stance. Uh, the fart in a jar thing was interesting there, to say the least. Uh, but judging from the manager here, it looks like he did get the worst of it. Uh, yeah. In addition to the insults, there are rumors of violence. What do you have to say about that? Your Honor, I did not physically assault anyone. I told the manager that he had to change the fries again, and he insulted me by saying things like, you can go home and crying and fill out the online customer form and send it to me. I could not remain calm in this situation, and I insulted him in the same way. Then he hit me, and the incident was taken to the police station where the malls, when the mall security arrived. You are the alleged perpetrator, Mr. Tyler. What is your defense? Your Honor, in the shock of the moment, I said in my statement that he hit me. In fact, there was a brawl between us. I can't remember exactly who hit who, but I am a respectable manager. I would never insult my customers. I am very clear about that. Hmm. All right. Well, definitely you insulted him. And since you can't even say that you actually started the fight, that changes my decision. We're going to go ahead and release him. And... Yeah, you started the altercation with your wording, and since you can't even say that he started the fight, I'm going to give you three months of public service. As I said, I mean, I get to make the decisions here. There's no right or wrong. I feel that that's a fine decision because, once again, definitely in the wording, he started with the insults. There's no question about that. Then since he says that he doesn't remember even who started the physical altercation, yeah, I'm fine with him getting the three months of the public service because he did start the situation. He probably also should be fired from his job, but that's up to the job to decide. If they had left it just words, I would have said not guilty to both. But since it did get physical, somebody needed to be punished, though minorly, because he already got his butt kicked in that fight, as you could see. All right, let's move on to the next case. All right, we have Caroline Lauren and Matthew Pessy. Charges, fraud. So, no criminal record, mental health and status are good. 
No criminal record, mental health, and status are good. It's been noticed that the person working at the Banana Republic Reserve Bank has prepared fake documents by accessing customer information without permission. Using the prepared documents, she informed the customer that there was some problems with the account and that they could safely transfer their money to a new account number they would provide. It has been determined that the email account used is a fake email account that imitates the official account of the bank. After the examination of the email sent, two employees became suspects and their statements were sought. Matthew Pessy, I've been working as a cybersecurity specialist in this bank for 12 years. I've always been honest and hardworking. I have no idea how the end of these accusations came to be based on me. I make my analysis and inform my authorities about the issues I find open in the system. I do all my work during working hours using the computer allocated to me by the bank and all of them are registered. I am innocent. Caroline Lauren, BR, I have been working at Reserve for four years as an individual customer supporter. I call and inform my customers about the campaigns and opportunities. I do this completely in accordance with the assignment from my superiors and it is all documented. How can I be accused of fraud? BR, I work as a retail customer supporter at Reserve. I didn't know Matthew very well, He always, who has always distant to me. But about one month ago, I felt that he was constantly trying to communicate with me, and I liked his interest. A couple of times we went to the bar for a drink after work. In these meetings, what he was interested in was not me, but the work I did at work, and what kind of policy I approached customers. I was very frustrated that he was talking to me about work, even outside of work, and I told him I didn't want to continue the call. Caroline and I have nothing but business friendships. Lately, she has been complaining about the slowness of her own computer and coming to me to do the work she needs to do from my computer. All right, so that's from Ashley Leakey. This was Caroline's statement. This was Matthew's statement. Franklet, we forwarded the system records to our bank, to our police friends. People who work will work on the system can only make transactions with fingerprints at the entrance and exit. Hope this will be useful to you in resolving the process. A person who tarnished the name of our bank and stole our customers' money will be found as soon as possible. Alright, so we've got the fingerprints there. Let's see here. contacting you regarding $105,000 in your, our bank due to the Trojan recently uploaded our mobile application breach has occurred in our system. Please transfer your funds to our secure account listed below to ensure the safety of your information deposit. After this transfer, the interest applied to your deposit will remain unaffected and any lost interest will be credited to your bank account within three to five business days. All right, we don't have a date or time on that. Log into the system, checking the, for vulnerabilities in the bank's mobile system and website. Information sent to the administrator about vulnerabilities found. No data log found. Log out of the system. All right, so that seems like his job. Committing campaigns with customers from the manager, documenting feedback from customers and reporting it to the manager. Logging out of the system. Download a list of clients with deposits over a hundred thousand. Wait a second though. Let's see that I believe, if I remember correctly, is her yeah, that's her fingerprint number. So her fingerprint was used, then download this clients with deposits over 100,000. Transfers of the downloaded documents to another unit. Document transfers completed. And is that his fingerprint number? 918735. 918735. So they were both in on it. Yeah, we're going to go with both of them here. Let's see what they have to say. When we look at the documents provided by the bank, we see a range of missing data in your system. What do you have to say about this? These and other meaningless errors are constantly happening in the system. Our task is to make the system better by fixing these vulnerabilities. I know this doesn't seem like it, but it's pure coincidence. 
You asked your colleague how you interact with customers. Is this also a coincidence? Your Honor, since I work mostly in the field of security, I was curious about how customers are communicated. It's also because I'm curious about what other employees at work are doing. You said that your own computer often slows down and gives you problems. Why didn't you reach out to the relevant outlets for maintenance and you were using your friend's computer? The last few weeks have been busy in terms of work and it was necessary to have a computer, albeit slowly, in this process. That's why I asked to, used to ask my friend when I had urgent work. So were the documents you downloaded while using your friend's computer also related to your busy work schedule? I have not downloaded any documents, Your Honor. Maybe I forgot to log out of my system and actually download it using my account. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really trust that. Uh, let's go back here real fast. See what this specific charge was again. Because again, I don't have my law book here. The one thing they would, I'd love for them to add to the, uh, this update is a law book because otherwise what I'm doing right now is I'm just going on Google here and typing in what is the punishment for fraud uh, prison sentence ranging from a year in jail for misdemeanor fraud to multiple years for felony convictions restitution to victims fines probation up to 10 years in prison for certain fraud offenses under the fraud act 2006 I would say that this is a significant fraud here by the two of them we're talking people who they were trying to get hundreds of thousands of dollars from so i'm going to go on the severe side here so we have f up to seven years imprisonment for false accounting you know what i'm going to go with the 10 year sentence i feel that's fair for what they were doing so you get 10 years And you get 10 years. You both were in on it. There we go. Let's move on to a third case. As I said, we'll do three cases per video here. So that way we should have all these done in 10 episodes. We're going to do one video per week on this on Saturdays. So it'll take a couple months here to get through this. But hopefully you'll enjoy these additional cases. And if it's something that you would like to see out there faster, do let me know and I will try to make that happen. Right now, as you probably are aware, I have a lot of stuff coming out on the channel. So there are a lot of games I'm recording on sort of a day-to-day -day basis. And that's why a few of these games like this one and TCG, I have moved to being a once a week type of game. All right, aiding and abetting an offender. All right, no criminal record, he's legal here. No criminal record and legal. No criminal record and legal. All right. In block E of the Banach Republic prison, an inmate named Victor Young has escaped in recent weeks and has not been caught yet. As a result of the extensive investigation carried out by the police, it was determined that the person was provided with daily clothes from outside and that the locked doors were open and exited the system. During the escape, it was understood that the individual would not have been able to escape without the assistance of the guards. In addition, it has been determined that the camera recordings of that hour have been deleted. As a result, the suspicious guards who were on shift at that time in Block E were detained. Joseph Wheeler... Look, I don't know who deleted the camera recordings. We all take turns monitoring the camera room during certain hours. I didn't leave the room at all except for urgent needs, and I never took my eyes off the screen. But the person I suspect is Lee. Because he called us to the prison, prison's cafeteria for donuts, he ordered, from outside during the shift change. I think it was at that moment that Victor's door opened. It is impossible for this to be a coincidence. Lee Fitz. I didn't order donuts or anything to call no one. That was Thomas's idea. He told me that he wanted to buy his donuts to celebrate that his daughter had given birth. But he forgot his wallet, so he said, He said, you take the order and pay it, I'll pay you later. That's all I know. Besides, I don't take the prisoner, I don't think the prisoner will escape for this reason. Joseph may be disorienting the target. Alright, so then we got Thomas. I've been a guard at this prison for almost 30 years. I have never seen such a ridiculous event in my entire life. 
Obviously, there's a traitor among us. I don't want to blame anyone, but Lee was always complaining about money he received. He always talked about taking bribes even if it was a joke. Doors used by the prisoner during his escape. B1, 330, 345, A2, 445 to 5 a.m., and E, 545 to 6 a.m. All right. So A2, 4.45 to 5 a.m. was Joseph Wheeler. Just at the end, it was of Lee's shift there. All right, B1, 3.30 to 3.45 was also Joseph Wheeler. Yeah. And E, 545 to 6, was also Joseph Wheeler. Bill of the Donut Order, Thomas Harrison, ordered time 8 a.m. Yeah, but the thing is, who was on the door for each of those times was Joseph Wheeler. I don't think it had anything to do with the donuts. Do you know the time when the prisoner escaped? No, Your Honor, they did not share this information with us. So why did you say in your testimony that the donuts were deserted at the time the order was made? This was just a guess. It's hard to think of about it. Security vulnerability occurred here. All the guards left the post. I saw Lee go to the bathroom while we were eating donuts. He may have done whatever he wanted at this point. I'm just saying that. Why do you think Joseph is off target? Your Honor, I heard that the prisoner escaped in clean clothes. In other words, someone from the outside has to bring him clothes. These guards don't have enough sense to put clothes in a donut box. If they were that smart, they wouldn't be guards. Laughs. Excuse me. I'm not sure if it was the day the prisoner escaped, but I'm sure it was that week. I saw that Joseph had bought new clothes. It was from an expensive brand. When I asked him why he brought these new clothes to work, he said, I am invited to a party after work. Would, you wouldn't get it, eh? Does the prison administration approve of you ordering from outside this way? Moreover, you left your post for a while. Your Honor, I have never crossed the street at a red light. We are all human and we make mistakes. Obviously, this event was pre-organized and has nothing to do with me ordering it. Whoever told this story was obviously trying to cover something up. Yeah, I would agree. So we got Joseph Wheeler here, and the charge, aiding and abetting. So again, looking up punishment, what is the punishment for aiding and abetting? Generally, the punishment for aiding and abetting is the same as the penalties for the criminal charges this principal offender faces. The severity of your penalty is convicted of aiding and abetting will depend on your state, but in general, more serious crimes will lead to harsher consequences for assisting in the crime. Huh. Alright. So, we need to know what the punishment is for escaping prison. Up to five years in jail if you try to escape after conviction or arrest on a felony charge. Up to one year behind bars if you try to escape during an immigrant proceeding, during a misdemeanor arrest, or as a juvenile. Sentence of a number of years specified. Alright, so it should be five years in jail if you try to escape after a conviction. So that's what Joseph Wheeler is going to get here, is five years because he was aiding and abetting. Alright, so let's go with the other two are not guilty first. They were just not, they were only guilty of uh, caring about donuts and being somewhat stupid. Alright, so those two are done. Joseph Wheeler, on the other hand, you are guilty and you're going to get a five-year sentence. 
Again, I'm going with what I'm finding on Google, so these times and stuff may not be accurate. I do wish I had the law book so I could do it appropriately. It's the one issue I have with this in the way they did this update. I do love the fact that they gave us 30 new cases. I'm really happy about that. I also like the fact that there's no quote unquote right or wrong answers. I'm sure you guys will respond with your thoughts on whether or not I was right or wrong. But as I said, I'm gonna try to go with the law as much as I can. And for that, I'm gonna have to use Google for the law because I don't have the law book here in front of me from the game. And I don't really wanna try to sort of jump back and forth between the cases and the law book, like having to go into the other portion of the game in order to get the law book and such. So since I don't have it, this is the best way I feel to do it. We're gonna get real decisions like it would be in a courtroom if Google is correct on what those uh, penalties are. And I'm assuming that the ones I'm reading are, since they seem to be using, using US codes, these are the penalties for these crimes in the United States. With that in mind though, Hopefully you enjoyed this return to Judge Sim. I know I did enjoy getting back into the judge's seat here in this game, and I'm hoping that maybe they will add even more cases in the future. For now though, I'm gonna go ahead and end this episode after these first three cases. So if you enjoyed what I did here, please go ahead and click that like button. And if you've not already, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon, so that you're aware when I produce new videos in the future. Thank you, and I hope to see you back for more of Judge Sim.